What's up, everybody? It's Joe Lapuma. You were listening. You were watching the Complex Sneakers Podcast. As always, I'm joined by my two friends, my two co-hosts. First off, Mr. Matt Welty. What a four hours it's been today. So it's been far. a full day, and it's only 1230. To my left, who I did introduce last week, <laughs> Mr. Brendan Dunn. As per usual. How you doing, buddy? I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yes. No, I was going to lie and be like, I'm okay. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm you were, you were uh, what did they call The grid? You were on the grid? I was on the grid. I was in the pits. Down you on the paddock? Is that what it is? I was in the paddock. Pharrell, Brad Pitt, and our own Brendan Dunn in the grid. <laughs> okay, F1. Yeah. The, F1. How was it? The Grand Prix in Austin this weekend. It was amazing. I was extremely thrilled to be there. First, hopefully, of many Grand Prix that I've been to. Yeah, I uh, was there with the good people at Pirelli. I was eating lobster in the suite. was walking around. got to go on the track, did some hot laps. I saw you. You had the helmet. Yeah, the helmet's necessary. Did you get to keep the helmet? No, I gave the helmet okay. back. Let's design a helmet for you, maybe. <laughs> also, why didn't you ask to um, wear, you know, the Pirelli hat that I wear? Oh, Remember? I got. I, <laughs> you should. Why didn't I? Would, I got a I Pirelli hat. To you. There, did you spend worry. like a hundred and twenty dollars on a merch hat? I, I did buy a Mercedes hat for our good friend Damien Scott. Oh, yeah. shouts to D aren't, Scott. Aren't, aren't the retail price on that stuff like astronomical? I, it didn't feel that expensive. I mean. Eighty dollars for a hat? I don't know. That's kind of expensive. A little bit. All right. I mean, listen. He's. A, I'm not saying that. I'm just. There. A, he's. He's. No, with I know. Brad Pitt I, and Pharrell. He. Eighty dollars. I get it. Shaq it is was expensive. there. Shaq was there. Was what Shaq an exciting DJing? race, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, let him enjoy and let him get Damien well. a uh, keepsake. What? A, what an exciting race. Should I break down the whole race here, or are there more important things to talk about today? Give us literally because we have a lot. <laughs> no, no, to, no, no, no. Listen, we have no. a lot to get to. No, let's. I have one thing that I have to talk to you about about the um weekend. As it relates to Instagram, but do you want to break down the race? Or? No, no, okay. we'll skip all that. People Let me ask you something. That's not what people are here for. Let me ask you. Yeah, you can read the results online. We don't need, okay? But <laughs> let me ask you something. The Instagram that you did, you mentioned that, I think you mentioned that you're going to get a gram off. You might, I think you did. Mm -hmm. from, the, from the race weekend. You indeed did get a gram off. Mm -hmm. We also discussed before you went the footwear. You said you were wearing Lost and Founds. In the photo, how did you not crease the Jordans? And did you make sure? <laughs> did you make sure that you didn't crease them? Honestly, no, I wasn't even digging that. I'm squatting down in the photo. This is yeah, this is definitely what people came here for. Um, I, I'm squatting down in the photo, and I guess the toe box was pretty flat on there. Flat which... heels to the ground. Before the podcast, <laughs> I tried to do it. Is that the proper it. squatting maneuver? Yeah. I tried to do it. I couldn't do it without creasing. And I was like, I wonder if he Can you is... not squat below parallel, Joe. I could. He's about to get up out of no, his I mean, chair and I, do it. Listen, I'm, is that a flexibility thing? Because I could definitely. I defer to Welty on all things yeah, squat could, related. Great flexibility. I always said, I think I've said it on here, the sit and reach in school. Do you ever have to do the sit and reach? Yeah, everyone has to do it. Okay. I, I, what, what it, sit and reach is, it, it measures flexibility. Fitness test. This is oh, what they okay. came here for. Measures flexibility. <laughs> I used to go off the chart. So, and yeah. I could do no, all but, that stuff. Yeah, we kept but how did, clean. no creases. I was, it was it was just automatic. It wasn't wasn't a conscious a effort. A sneakerhead's dream Man, Instagram. So, it, was, it was a bit of a sneakerhead's nightmare out there. I saw some bad shit, some fake Dior ones, some oh, fake 7-Elevens. Oh, of course. Oh, wow. The real question is though. Oh. I guess a good segue is so you, you technically got backdoored those lost and found. Oh, Jordan that's where we're going. Oh, okay, good segue. Because I saw you right? wait from the grid. You did a you did a th Twitter thread. You know I catch up yep. a Twitter thread about uh, potential backdooring. Uh -huh. We saw a photo go online, and then you got sent one. Yep. And then you did a Twitter thread about uh -huh. it. And here I am wearing the shoes. And there you are. But you had those. Did you wear those last week on the pod? You wore them on full size, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've had them for a little bit. Okay. Uh, mine as, were not backdoored to me. Well, they were sold to you or nope. given to you. Thank you. Were they given to you by Jordan Brand? <laughs> yes. They were? Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, but when all these situations happen, I think mm -hmm. we can all agree that like it's like all of a sudden you open up your Twitter and your mentions are people are like, oh, you need to talk about... Backdooring. Yes. Yeah. And look... Okay, let's talk about it for sure. So the Air Jordan 1 lost and found a sneaker that people are saying there's going to be tons of this fall. And I believe that those numbers are very huge. But we're already seeing what looks like evidence of people backdooring the sneakers. So as Joe referenced, there's a photo floating around that is somebody in the consignment hallway at Flight Club in New York. And I know what that hallway looks like, believe me. And they got a bunch of shoes up on the desk. And they have what looks like the exact boxes that a retailer would have been sent the shoes from Nike. Those are 100%. Those, exact. those boxes haven't changed in 20 years. No, they have Those are yeah. the yeah. exact same ones. Those were yeah. the Foot Locker and Finish Line Yeah, yeah, yeah. Line same with, with, like the, like, with like yeah. the, or the, exact same the diamond since, or whatever. Since yeah. decades ago. Yeah. And, I, and I agree with Welty 
on the aspect of every time that there's talk of backdooring, everybody wants us to talk about it, which I understand we have that responsibility, but also I'm I'm a little bit confused why people are still surprised by it because we know backdooring, all your favorite shops do it. All, you're all not, the you're not, ma you're get not their making, stock. I, I want to get it like clear yeah. that like I'm not an advocate yeah. of, of backdooring. Yeah, because you zagged on the tweet and then well, I think someone responded, Joe yeah. responded like, like co signing it. Joe, um, from oneness. Oh, yeah. So, so can you explain? Can you my, say what my you thing tweeted, is? Though? My thing is, is that so every like I mentioned before, every mm -hmm. time there's like some case of like maybe backdoor or yeah. sometimes no proof of backdoor. It's mm -hmm. just a picture within a sneaker store mm -hmm. of yeah. shoes that haven't come out yet. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you don't know 100 percent of that. That's backdooring. And or, we try to be super conservative with. Yes. That. Consider for sure. every angle. Is this really what we think? it yes. is? Yes. Because everyone out there's like a, a legion, I would say, on social media, people that like I would almost say like backdoor conspiracy because it's good engagement. Anytime that you can claim that something's yeah. being backdoored, but there's a lot of people you're gonna out get a there, lot of likes and retweets. Or I wouldn't say that. No, I'm not saying bigger accounts who are putting the information out there, but just a lot of users on Twitter mm -hmm. who, every time there's like a backdooring instance, they like hop on it. You yeah, know, yeah, ever yeah, since sure. the, ever since the Marcus Jordan, uh, Annie Bear, mm -hmm. Joey Bear scandal. Yeah. So I had said that. Um, you want me to read it? You can read it. You said a lot, but. You yeah, actually, you, sure. You said ninety eight percent to be. Oh, okay. there were, there was a tweet I said before that. Ninety eight percent of people who get angry about things at sneaker stores slash have all the answers on how retailers should operate their business have never worked at a sneaker store. That's basically that's what we're talking about. And right? ninety eight percent, obviously, not a exact number, mm -hmm. but I would say the majority of people who are like, this is how sneaker stores should operate. This is yeah. how they shouldn't operate. They don't know the realities of that business. There were people out there saying that like the best way for Nike to handle uh, backdooring is for retailers to get the shoes day of release. And I'm like, well, that and, and I'm like, tell me, I'm like, <laughs> no. tell me you've never worked at a sneaker store without telling me you've yeah. never worked at a sneaker store. Yeah. Did any more information come from that? Because I saw your thread, uh -huh. and then I think you said also maybe they were stolen. Right. Did any That's more? That's the thing. That's yeah. the thing. Like, I think it's always important. And we have the responsibility to be conservative about these things and consider every possible reality yeah. of what mm -hmm. this is and then determine which is most likely. And that was one thing I hadn't considered until after I put the thread out, but that maybe these sneakers that were being dropped off at Flight Club were stolen. You know, like we know this has happened with FedEx. We know people have lots of complaints about sneakers being stolen before they even get to the the person they're intended for or the store they're intended for. So maybe that's it. I something stolen from me last week. What? This is like the craziest thing because I can I can only imagine mm -hmm. or not even imagine what happened. Like I had a package delivered and like four days later it's not there. So yeah. I'm like, and it was so the you day that to I the was super about your package it, being stolen. Yeah, how does that work? Do you complain to yourself? And file <laughs> no, a I just I just have to. It just goes right back to the apartment. <laughs> just something. It was the day. Was it sneaker sell? No, it no. was. A, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh. It's the day that I was here, so I was gone all day. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait, where is this package? So I look up the the shipping or whatever, and it was said it was delivered like four days prior. So I'm yeah. like, okay, it's. Someone clearly like went and swiped the package, dude. It was creatine and pre workout. I, I can only, know. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can only imagine okay. Okay. the person who swiped that, like opening it up and being like, "Why did I do this?" So totally a possibility that these sneakers were stolen before they got to the store they were intended for. Yeah, that's that's a thing too. But so it looks a lot though like this is a person who works at a sneaker store who's been given the stock early and told, go to Flight Club, make some extra money for us to store by selling these early at Flight Club. Somebody else who says they were there sent me an additional photo that has the more labels on the boxes. And if this is what it looks like, which is backdooring from a sneaker store, it's a super lazy way to do it. You didn't even take the shoes out of the yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah. They sent them to you in. And there's all this info on the box. There are purchase order numbers mm -hmm. and... If you work at Nike, if you have like access to out. yeah, if you have access to Nike's internal system, this is SAP where all the orders go through. You could just punch in those purchase order numbers, and you can figure out who mm. these sneakers were intended for, and do something about it. If you were inclined to do something about it, if you care, and I think that's the other part of this is people always want to say like, Nike doesn't care about resellers. I don't, I don't think it's that simple. And I said as much on Twitter. I think it's a lot more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think I do think they care when the stuff goes viral and then they have to look into it. But it's just a headache for them. Mm. Yeah, but you know, there were a lot of interesting stories that people were telling me as I was, and this is people who work in the industry, who work at retail, who worked at Nike at times, who were telling me like basically if if a problem like this happens and Nike becomes aware that there's 
accusations of backdooring that they have to go ask the sales reps and that a lot of times the sales reps or the allocators, the people helping these stores get their stock, don't necessarily want to snitch, I guess, or rat out their makes sense the, the stores that they're working with. It's not in their interest to like cut the allocations or, or drop a store's account. And they've said even more that you know sometimes there are, you know, and I know this sounds very sensational, but you know stories of sales reps getting envelopes of cash to increase people's allocations in, in order to ha- have stores get more pairs. You know, so like there's questions i think about that whole process and what that looks like but either way like if this is what it looks like it's super lazy and it's a reminder that yeah this stuff happens all the time well i think i'm to me there's like i guess like two parts to it where it's obviously it's a sign of backdooring or you said it could be stolen but Mm -hmm. at the same time too not to like make light of it Mm -hmm. but say that that looked like it was only like 12 pairs of shoes 18 pairs 18 pairs yeah yeah. because it has the quantities on the boxes yeah so I thought, sorry, I thought it was two boxes, but it was, I guess it might have been three. I think so. If 18 of the million are gone, and I'm saying that's not the only instance, mm, but right. like maybe like 0. 0.0 or like not even 0.1% of the stock. That was caught though. No, that's caught, but I'm yeah. saying realistically gets backdoored. Yeah. That's not really what's affecting your chance at getting the shoes. I think it does affect people's chances, and I understand why people are mad about it. But it's just to say, say like total, right? Say if there was. A million pairs made and a thousand mm. pairs were backdoored. Yeah, like just percentage wise, it like may slightly af- like affect, but it's yeah. not, that's not the real reason. It's hard to know those percentages, but I would think that the percentages are higher than that. But I don't know. But this looked a lot like backdooring to me. And if Nike wants to do something about it, they have the information to do something about it. So I don't know that we'll ever hear about that. But and also, it's, it's you, you have to consider, like I said, every possibility because this is people's businesses there at stake. Yeah. You know, this well, person could get fired. You know, from their I, job working at the sneaker store. I'd also said too, where it's like interesting part where I don't think we discussed it on here. Where I have friends who resell and they mm-hmm. tell me the reality of a lot of it. Where it's like, if you want to buy a popular shoe. A lot of the times the stores will make you buy like the stuff that's sitting in the store. Right. So if you want to get like Jordans or Yeezys or whatever, you have to like go and buy like the Reeboks or like yeah, Stan clear out their inventory. In terms of when they're backdooring? Yeah. You have oh. to like buy. If you like, want to buy in bulk. If you want to buy, if you want to buy a hundred pairs of Yeezys or Jordan ones, you have to buy a size run of Reeboks. That's that like have. what Jordan used to do with the apparel when like you wanted a Jordan <laughs> yeah. account. But in, a lot of that occurs because brands put like minimums Mm -hmm. on the retailers where it's like if you want like your jordan account you have to like order a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars whatever amount of product per season Mm. and a lot of like 90 percent of that is not the hype stuff right so you're like well i it's not like you chose these retailers didn't pick to buy these shoes they're forced to like yeah in a way yeah to do this and if they can't sell them all they're like how do we get rid of them yeah so a lot of them is like you're in a cash strap business that yeah. has to f- operate in like for some people i'm guessing the only way to keep the books afloat on all of this is to yeah. sell some of the shoes in the back door which i'm not saying it's okay mm-hmm. yeah but it's way more complicated than people think this is the important part we're not absolving the retailer or the resellers mm-hmm. it's just that there's a big system that's been built this way and that's been kind of heading toward this point for decades now yes and that's why this happens not because like this evil retailer no wants extra money because they're greedy the people who work at the stores aren't just jerks who want to say screw the customers and so, all yeah. of this sort of stuff there's just like sometimes people's hands are tied and they're forced to do these things there's a lot of play people got to pay rent a lot of nuance yeah. a lot of context nuance context both okay. abundant oh. all right <laughs> Speaking of nuance, what we or lack thereof or all of it while we're here today, Kanye West. So, oh my let's God. let's set the stage. You know, wanted to get things out of the way, mm-hmm. but today, uh, October twenty fifth, we woke up and Adidas has dropped. Kanye West has severed ties on that partnership. Something that we figured would happen, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah. even over this, you know, you're not that it's like any. Big prediction, but this weekend I just we, you I think had said we, to us. Yeah, I, I was on a flight and I'm like, think I think that it's, it's going to a close. Yeah, it's coming to a close. And this was Sunday, and I texted you guys, and I, we didn't have any new information or mm-hmm. anything like that. But it just felt like it. And then sure enough, today it was just like getting more and more uh, 
you know, more noise on online. And then today, I think around maybe 6.30, news broke that uh, the partnership is over. When, yeah. you, when you see people who like aren't part of the sneaker world, who are like verified accounts, et cetera, who mm. are like, Adidas, this is unacceptable, like, like making tweets, you know, calling for mm. the cancellation. That's when you realize they're like, it's out. This is bigger. Well, yeah. the thing that happened over the weekend is like the real life, basically the signs on, what was it, the 405 yeah, in LA? Yeah, LA. This is, oh, this yeah. Stuff and that has is real life consequences. That is what really. Anti-Semitic speech. That exactly. Said. I mean, that's what this weekend, when I, I was saying like the chatter was picking up momentum, that image, which is crazy to, yeah. to think that that was an actual image, the 405. With and the, a direct result. Of yeah, a what direct Kanye result. Said. And named him, named him in, in the sign. And that's when, as unbelievable as what he was saying all last week, I feel like those images on the highway yeah. took it to another level because real life consequent, like real life yeah. rhetoric that was now creep like you saw it, it yeah, wasn't just, just him something you wasn't said him in, in the brown they wasn't him the in, interview yeah. wasn't him in the brown hoodie talking it was yeah. like others following yes, what he exactly. was saying so adidas said this is part of the statement after a thorough review the company has taken the decision to terminate the partnership with yay immediately and production of yeezy branded products and stop all payments to yay and his companies adidas will stop the yeezy business with immediate effect the other thing that's interesting is that they mentioned in there in their in their comment that quote adidas is a sole owner of all design yeah. rights to existing products as well as previous and new colorways under the partnership and that's the thing that was people were really that's the yeah. first thing that like i like people when were, it happened i was like wow this is like people were literally circling the statement and what does that say they're gonna still gonna to sell you? the shoes that's i think they're the, definitely the contract was debating. buttoned up they're, they're debating like whether or not they could get away with that because that's going to be a huge headache for them. But also the headache would come from Ye and he doesn't really have the platform right now well, to, I mean, go Nike, to war with them in the same Nike's way. Nike's been doing it for years. Yeah. Adidas has been doing it. It's nothing. So it's the first time that this has happened with like an entertainer mm -hmm. yeah. partnership. But for years, uh, Nike, um, you know, they sold – Chris Weber's shoes. Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. uh, Andre Agassi, who's mm -hmm. now back with Nike, but when he wasn't, um, they sold all the signature shoes without the signature logos or names attached to it. Yeah. Adidas did the same or continues to do the same with Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the Kobe went to the Crazy 8. Yeah. So, I mean, somebody, somebody made the joke to me of, oh, you could just call it the Crazy 350 and it'd be pretty accurate. Like the Crazy 8s? Yeah, like the you know Adidas crazy boost. I'm one. What do we think is going to happen with that? There's obviously a ton still left to come out. Yeah, and we were talking about it in the Slack, like donate or destroy. What what I mean, path? I, I don't know. To me, yeah. one of the biggest questions right now is how retailers will handle this because yes. So I think Adidas did the right thing to drop Kanye West. Uh, it's going to cost them a couple billion dollars in revenue. But I think they I think, said, what, $276 million this year alone? They, well, there's like a short-term loss that they're expecting of $250 million Euros on the net revenue. Okay. You know, that's substantial. $246 million, I'm sorry. No, 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 all good. But yeah, it was the right thing to do because of the anti-Semitic comments, because of the conspiracy theory about George Floyd's death that he repeated. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's done enough to, to, to justify this. But... I, I think that there are so many businesses that are going to be impacted that are kind of worrying at this point. You know, there are a lot of sneaker stores who their Adidas mm -hmm. business Definitely. relies Definitely. so heavily on this Yeezy volume, all these Yeezy sneakers coming mm -hmm. out on a regular basis that they have good allocations of. And while I believe that to some extent they're probably happy that Adidas has severed ties because of the rhetoric that Ye was putting out there, mm -hmm. I think they also have questions of like, oh, that means a lot in terms of, of their business and their cash flow. You know, for Adidas, they're a gigantic corporation. Mm -hmm. and it, it's huge, yeah. but I think they can make it up. But for some of these small sneaker stores, I'm sure they are worried. And I, I think they still have questions about, you know, when Adidas put this statement out, from what I understand, the stores didn't have any information mm -hmm. yet that the public didn't have. And even internally, Adidas was keeping it quite quiet, you know. There was a statement put out by a woman who was a, a marketing director. Yeah, director yeah. at Adidas. She took to LinkedIn and basically made this public statement of like, look, I'm not 
I'm not standing with this. How could my company do this? And even inside Adidas, people were asking for answers from leadership. And I think they were just keeping it as quiet as possible. Yeah. And that was around, you know, that statement that the woman made who worked at Adidas and uh, came out and spoke against uh, what Kanye was saying. That was like, you know, that must have been nine hours before. Mm -hmm. And good uh, for her for yeah. taking that stand publicly and taking that risk in terms of her job and her employment. Um, I, I have a little bit, I mean, I've been trying to figure out, like I said, this retailer aspect of it. And I have a little bit of information so far about what's going to happen with them. I know that there was a note sent out, Yeezy urgent update saying basically we will not go ahead with any future Yeezy launches. So there's no plans right now from what I understand. For them I mean, there's no way they could. Releasing you know. shoes. Yeah, they said mm -hmm. uh, please halt all online or offline communication on Yeezy products. All Yeezy deliveries will be stopped. So they are echoing in this message to retailers what they said in their statement was like immediately – anything regarding the Yeezy brand is finished. But we know that there are finished product, either bunch, you sure. know, on yep. boats, you know, going to sneaker stores around the world or sitting in the stock rooms of sneaker stores. Somebody sent me a photo of all these Yeezy boxes they had in their store. Like, what am I supposed to do? You know, I know people who just got hundreds of pairs. What are they supposed to do? And it's crazy seeing like, like obviously you see all the, this is a bad situation mm -hmm. like all around, mm -hmm. right? But then it's also crazy when you see this stuff get posted and then there's people who are like, I don't care. I'm going to wear them anyways in, in the comments, yeah. you know, and it, they're like basically picking the hill to die on the fact that their sneaker collection is 30 pairs of Yeezys and they don't want their sneaker collection to go from 30 pairs to two oh, pairs. Yeah. So they're like trying to like mentally gymnastic their way around Justify. to like still having a sneaker collection. Just it's so funny you say that someone hit me last night and was like, I need to like, fix they were just like i have 17 pairs it's all i wear i'm i'm not like not gonna wear he was like anymore. sending air force ones and things and i was like what do you you think people care it was late at night it was late at night and he was like what do you think i was like oh air max 95 but he was like i have seven my whole closet is 17 pairs of yeezys and i need to shift and start buying yeah. i think there's a lot of people out there who are just like they have yeezys but they're maybe they're like disconnected from the conversation mm -hmm. to some degree you know where it's they're just you see a lot of people wearing Yeezys who aren't quote unquote sneaker heads yes. or people who are like mm -hmm. within our space. So I don't know if those people are going to be like super passionate mm -hmm. or adamant about not wearing their shoes or they may not even be 100% like cognizant of like the situation mm -hmm. with it. So maybe you you'll probably still will see people wearing Yeezys and then maybe they're not wearing Yeezys as like a protest. They just don't know like yeah. what – what yeah. the situation is, but there were people out there who were trying to be like, this is free speech. You can wear whatever he wants. And I'm like, oh man, this is like the road that you're going down. Right, like, this is the hill you die on. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just really, yeah, I think I was telling Dunn before um, we started shooting like six months ago, just graduation gifts for like my cousins, like all they yeah, yeah. wanted or one pair of Yeezys. Yeah. And, you know, th this is like a real end of an era. Yeah. Think about it. Like, you know, once you, you take a step back, it's like this is an end of an era for a partnership. And Unprecedented the Drink Champs episode, like when he made the statements, basically that Adidas can never drop him, he said it. And then yeah. he leans into the microphone. And reiterates. And reiterates yeah. But I think it. this is what he wanted. Do you think that this was – I know we had, like, touched on this in, in past episodes mm -hmm. where – not like giving him an okay on any of this, no, but do you, do you think that like maybe this was more of like him just trying to see like how he could, like if he wanted to, because before, before obviously he wanted to like sever the deal or like somehow like screw it up, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that this was like a self-sabotage where he figured like what's the most like outlandish thing that I can do that's going to break the contract? I mean... I have no idea. I don't know. But I have no idea, but like this, the effect that it has, is it possible that this is what he want? Like this is what he wanted. I, I people were asking that wanted, question, but I still think that he believes all that stuff. And like you said, it doesn't excuse it on any level. No, 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 no I'm not. I, I, I do think that that's what he wanted. Did you think that he knew the exact consequences versus? Well, I want to be free out of them versus the I consequences don't know. That's of stuff to say. That's what I, I'm, I'm Do you wondering. think there's any reality where, like, three years down the line or whatever, if Kanye goes away for a while and, like, rehabilitates his public image or whatever, where people warm up to him again? I don't know. Uh, Tough to say. I don't know. And I will say that, again, unequivocally, Adidas made the right decision. This was the mm -hmm. right thing to do. They had to. You have to get rid of somebody who's talking like that, who doesn't align with 
the values of the brand. I think that it's going to be really hard for him to have an impact as sneakers ever again. I, I'm, I was wondering at like where, you know, we have the question that yeah, yeah, yeah. we have the question, today's question, just to get that out of the way. You know, oh, yeah. I, I need, I know usually we make a mm-hmm. big thing about the question and the giveaway, but um, today's question, super topical, Eric street from Milwaukee, Wisconsin asks, what will be the future of Yeezy footwear? Will he ever sign with another major brand? Yeah. Uh, and let's just yeah we're giving yeah, away we'll sneakers, give we'll so give yeah. away we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, you know topical question Eric it's not a question where we have some stories to do but we'll so figure that grab this pair yep oh easy they're already falling out of the easy box easy does it oh the, oh, the box was fumble. open behind my usually this is don't worry they'll they'll come pristine I see what they are yeah. this is not even Getting close a little to worse by the, okay by the and the background for people yeah, is that every we week here on the complex sneakers podcast we give away a free pair of sneakers. With our good friends at eBay through their Authenticity Guarantee Program. You can enter to win a pair of these sneakers by going to ebay.complex.com and giving us a yes. question to answer here on the air. If we answer your question, we're going to send you a free pair of sneakers. Sending some uh, off-white women's Jordan 4s nice. this week to... What, what's, what's Eric Street, name? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, um, well, you know... That's a shoe that's grown on me oh, a it's lot. A great, it's great. At first, yeah. I was just like, not disappointed, but... When you just saw it, you're like, oh, it's just an all tan mm-hmm. Jordan 4. Kind of plain. You, yeah. Some, some good tones in there. As I've though. seen more people wear them over yeah. the years, it's become a better shoe. There you go, Eric. I didn't realize these are kind of like a suede new button. Yeah, there's a, there's, you definitely played around with some tones. I thought and, it was a canvas thing. Yeah, more. tones and some, uh, some nice. materials. The translucent midsole is nice on it, too. Same yeah. with the back. The but back Eric piece. asks, and, you know, it fits into mm-hmm. basically what we're talking about. Uh, not basically, totally, mm-hmm. the, this stage of the conversation. Yeah. If he'll, what happens next with him in footwear? And you just said that there's a possibility you never see him making sneakers again. I mean, for another I think major he'll try brand. And he's going to try not it. with a major brand, right. like or he's independently. Gonna, independently, uh, he's yes, definitely going to yeah. try it independently. Yes, we he, all he has to, and he will, and he should, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to buy any of them, but I, I think that no sneaker brand will partner with him ever again. I think it's too risky at this point. Well, I think, especially, yeah, yeah, I especially think. considering the fact that. All these sneaker brands are like big corporations mm-hmm. with like a ton of employees mm-hmm. that like if they were ever to sign Kanye again, there would be such a like outcry. Upper, yeah, like, like, like why are we doing this? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just can't, I can't picture any brand taking that risk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, you said go away. I don't know, going away. I don't, I'm just, I, I don't know. I, if I'm it's not. Gonna, yeah. I'm not giving him the pass on it, but, no, but you've seen in the past where it's like big celebrities who have huge incidents where they go away for x amount of time in like public yeah i mean this was the guy who said years ago that slavery was a choice and adidas didn't drop it back then you know what i mean end of an era yeah had to happen good riddance so eric milwaukee wisconsin you're getting the off-white jordan fours thanks for the question super topical uh we'll see you know story developing as always all right, we got those things out of the way. Obviously, very pressing topics we wanted to talk about, but we also do have a guest today. Yes, we do. Our guest on today's podcast is an established actor and musician who played Slim Charles in one of the best shows in television history. The Wire is known for many things, but its authentic fashion has held up throughout the years, specifically nodding to the D.C. and Baltimore aesthetic. Here to talk some behind the scenes of the footwear and style choices for such a historic show and more is Anwan Glover. Welcome, Anwan. Hey. How you doing, man? Beautiful, man. Beautiful ride up. Yeah. It's an awesome day, man. Before we start, we, you know, off camera, we, you, you mentioned that uh, my co-host has the New Balance on. Let's go through what everyone's wearing on feet. Whew, man. Yeah. You like those? <laughs> those are dope. The, we got to get him a pair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out Michael Vincent. Uh, these are the Invincible New Balance 1906. Okay. I like yeah. them. Comfortable. I'm doing the Nike Ambush Air Just Force. I like those. Appreciate oh, high praise from you. Sometimes <laughs> he don't give it up. Sometimes he'll tell you. Sometimes, but uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. I, I like this color. I, the black and white. I was thinking about getting. I didn't pull the I trigger. Like that one. I like the white and black one the most. But so he doesn't like. That. Of course. See, this is what <laughs> happens. And one. This, and one. This is what happens. They'll, they'll, no, it, sorry. The black one. No, I mix up the the black one. The black with like the purple. <laughs> what about the blue one? Whoa. I like the black one. Yeah, see, exactly, exactly. <laughs> every, time, every time, every yeah. time. Don, what do you got? Yeah, uh, Air Jordan was a little early, <laughs> lost and found. Oh, you know, team early. Ch- put put yeah. some wear into them so you, you found can see them this early? is a wear test. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they got lost off. But I got on the um, New Balance 990. The, um, I think June created these, DTLR. 
Shout out, June, the, um, shout the, out the, June the Sanders. Good yeah, dude. June, good dude, man. He he always come up with those different like strings and color coordinations. But these are so comfortable, super dope. Did you get those Miami ones that came out recently? Yeah, yeah. The gray I, ones? I actually only wore them one time when I went to Miami. Yeah. And oh, I okay. took them back off and wiped the bottom off. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and yeah. I'd be remiss not to mention, you have two Ewings on the desk. Yeah. What's up with those? Yeah, so these was um, created. Also, I did these this um, two sneakers with June from DTLR. Mm -hmm. Okay. The um, This is the uh, Big G Ewing 51 mm -hmm. for, um, for DC. And um, we did the uh, DC flag on the back and these in the um, metallic color with the black and red. And um, we also did the uh, the Georgetown Got one it. with the big G on the bottom with the patch of Ewan, the Georgetown colors, and uh, Pat Ewan on the side. We did awesome with these as well. Yeah, yeah everybody. When, when are you going to do a New Balance shoe? When is, when is the big G? Man, I'm trying, man. Shoe? I'm yeah. trying. Um, Hopefully soon, yeah. Because like the city, it's it's a lot of love, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And with me being on stage and me doing yeah. film and always in the community, we can really like make a big pitch and sell it at a sellout. Only thing I want to do this time, I want to get like grade school because a lot of the kids weren't able to get the shoot. The oh, year. got it, got it, got and it. And they fuss me out. Mm. Oh, like yeah, everybody. Man. So you know what I mean. Hopefully soon with New Balance. So you know what I mean. We've been doing a bunch of stuff like brewing and giving a bunch of stuff back to the community. Awesome. We do a little bunch of stuff with the homeless people as well. Wonderful. Were, yeah. were you excited for those? Uh, I know DTLR. I think last year had done that DC nine nine two. The gray, yeah. the gray you and know, black everybody ones. Everybody do. It was it was almost that color. Yeah. And it was so crazy. The line was around the corner. It was this like something that we could say is ours. Cause we kind of adopted the New Balance a long yeah. time ago, and we really wear the New Balance. Like when people see us out of town, they be like, "We're from DC," cause that's mm. what like, basically all we wear mm -hmm. is New Balance. So, yeah, it was a big thing, and it was a good sale to a lot of people. Still talking about it, like people that weren't able to get the shoe. It's like, "Gee, can you get the shoe?" I'm like, "Man, I've been trying to call June, but it's like when it's a big commodity, like when it's a big high number, and yeah. people like want it." And it, it, it sold out. And I'd, I'd heard too, I guess, that, you know, back in the 80s when New Balance first, like, kicked off in D.C., part of the reason of it, too, was because the gray shoes matched the Georgetown gear so yeah. well. And everybody was like, uh, that's where everybody went to shop at, Georgetown. You had all the stores, Sabi, out all Prince the and princesses. princes and princesses. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, players. Players, all those tippies. Different, tippies all Cavaliers. Those different Cavaliers. All those places, like, um... Four dudes, mm -hmm. all the different places they had all of the shoes, where they had all the different gear like the Mars Brown, all those different stuff like mm -hmm. that. Tom Teller, they had all the different gear. You could just throw it on with New Balance. As the show, like you were shooting, like I, we had Idris on the show on on Sneaker Shop, yeah, and he said, you know, the great. first couple seasons, it, you know, the footwear it was like on the wire, kind, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. scarce. And then as it kept going on, you guys would one get stuff sent to set, but yeah. also those stores in DC were. Yeah. What what was that like? Yeah, they were like, "Come on in." It was good, man, because like you know, I rocked. I I wore the we I won. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then they let me just let go. Yeah, and I was matching it the the New Balance with the outfit, wrapping bands around my head. Mm -hmm. It was just fresh because they you know they wanted it more authentic than ever. Yeah, and it, it was it was dope. Can you yeah. talk about the difference between Baltimore and Washington D.C., especially in terms of sneakers? Because recently I talked to some people who worked on uh, We Own the City. Yeah, uh, you know uh, the costumer Dewan Prince. I don't know if you yeah, know Dewan. Yeah, yeah, super dope. And That's it was my funny guy. because like I, that show is set in Baltimore, and I, I wrote the story about it and how they picked out all the shoes. And as soon as I published it and put it on social media, right. half the comments were like. People from Washington D.C. being like, Baltimore doesn't know how to dress. <laughs> All these things they're talking about are Washington D.C. trends. Right. So, could you explain this? Like, is it a beef or like what? And what are the no, sneaker it, differences it's between? So it's, I, I just say like back in the day, yeah. like forward now, Baltimore has a different style. Yeah. Okay. Back then, is it, it was any like, good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like back then, it was just like you, you had the long T-shirts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they kind of portrayed that for Baltimore. Yeah. And they kind of portrayed that on the wire. Mm -hmm. But you had club, people going to club, they really can put clothes on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But they didn't show that part. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The, the guys that really was in the street, fancy, putting it on with the the, the Mercedes and mm. all the different cars, they were putting it on. They were just showing how the young hoppers were, mm. like on the block with mm -hmm. the long T-shirts. and but, but Baltimore can dress. Yeah. You know what I mean? People just don't show it. You know what I mean? Just like in D.C., if you don't have a... I would let the show what the gear is or right. some old pictures or whatever, but Baltimore could put it on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can, can you yeah. explain to me? So I've heard like 
talked to a lot of DC people about New Balance, and they said that there's a lot of people in DC who are reluctant to wear like a lot of the New Balance in brighter colors because it's like a lot of the yeah. collaborations will come out in the bright colors, but they're like, no, I only want the gray ones. The old school, old school won't put it on. Interesting. They won't wear, they won't wear the the bright vibrant colors they won't do it they'll just wear the same the 990s or the 1300s you know what i mean they're just the basic gray color or mm -hmm. just a tad bit of red at the shoe shoe string or something mm -hmm. I wonder but, if it's but you're really okay with it though right yeah i'm okay i me i'm because i'm always out i like to put on different outfits mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i'm gonna go with the fad i'm gonna keep my grays and bust mm -hmm. my grays but i'm gonna I'm wear what you know what i mean with the different patterns with a different outfit not too crazy with it though you know? I wonder if it's similar to how people won't wear like non OG colors of Jordans. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the grays, the grays are the OGs. See, it's a lot like with the with the Jays. I I tend to like stay like retro. Okay. Like old school. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And and the colors like, but the ones that like they just came out with um, that one with that pink in it, mm -hmm. and then the one with the the, the kind of metallic, like it kind of like. It's, it's, it looked like a shiny, but it's, it has that green. Yeah, I, I got those because I got all and all us had them on together. Yeah, it, got it, it looked it, got crazy, it. but you got to wear like a, a plain white tee, mm. <laughs> yeah. or a plain black tee, but you can't chill on top a little crazy on the bottom. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There you yeah. go. Back in the day, like, do you remember who the people were who you first saw doing some of these staple? Washington DC sneaker things, whether it's foam posits or New Balances, like, do you have that in your head of like, oh, I remember when so and so came out. Like like back in the day, like when I was a kid, like I used to like just stand in front of like the Celebrity Hall, the mm -hmm. Black Hole. Mm -hmm. It was like Rare Essence. You'd see Fat Rodney, all the different guys come in like with Rare Essence and have a show with like... Um, this is a band? Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, with yet. a go-go band. Like, okay. And it was like the Apollo Theater in D.C. Okay. The big lights up there and then everybody would put on their best outfits Okay. just to come in to, to see the band. You know what I mean? But they have like... Um, like nice and smooth or somebody like that mm -hmm. on the show, you know what I mean? Like one of those old school rappers and then everybody put their best on with the big chains mm. coming in with the New Balance, man, different like Jordans, mm -hmm. like back, back, in, back in the day, like different sneakers and it was like a fashion show. Mm. Lights, camera, action, see who got the best whatever on, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But it was different brands. It was Lee Cotte Sportiste, mm -hmm. Prince. Mm -hmm. um, man, you had Troop, tennis yeah. shoe back then. Old they school. were coming in. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, what else they had? Um, Sergio Tacchini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, we were in, in D.C. It was, like, big on sweatsuits. Okay. During mm -hmm. that time, and they match it up. It had a K-Swiss or classic Reebok, something like that. But when New Balance came, you, they really wear the New Balance with the Moss Brown sweatsuits. And I was a little kid on the bike, just like, my, my time come. Mm. You know what I mean? Just like watching, they were coming in the club fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like pulling up with BBS rims, and I was the, that was the show. Damn. That was the- And you were there that, taking notes. I was like, man, I can't wait. Huh. You know what I mean? So that was the time. So I'm a, I'm a big sneakerhead, man. I was gonna post this piece. I have a storage unit. I gotta get rid of a bunch of stuff. And they talking about Jordans, man. Yeah, I got Jordans, man. The New Balance, come on, man. Yeah, we need to see <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, we need to see those store the storage units. I can, I can, I can give it to you before I go. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. got all the shoes. I just was in there. That, From that, what that, era? Every era. Wow, <laughs> we need that. I got like man, old Gucci. I got everything. You got in the there. Gucci. Tennis? Any game worn wire game. episode shoes in there? Yeah, I actually have a um a pair of Adidas mm -hmm. from the the movie Love I shot with Carmen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, said I was just gonna put them online just to see if somebody wanted them yeah. before we can do some stuff for. Cause I work with homeless kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sasha Bruce in DC. I just for some stuff for for we can trade it over to DTLR and they can have a whole slew of stuff for the kids for yeah. the holidays, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. I think yeah. one of the interesting things too about DC footwear is you take the two most like iconic shoes with it. You have New Balance 990 and then Foam Posit and they're both two shoes that had such a high retail price at them and there was always kind of like, you know, that uh, connection where it's like, these were like the hustler shoes. Like if you had this shoe, you had like status. Was that yeah. like a thing yeah. or? See, if you had the, if you had the Foam Posits, you were somebody. Like you being outside, like the kids are standing in line. Even before it was lines or raffles, mm -hmm. they'd the just be outside. Yeah, in the night they'd be outside just to make sure we had that that phone posit. 
you had to have it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, like, and then it, and it came a time where they were, like, sticking kids up for their shoes. And I used to always, like, put a message out, like, you can't wear that shoe forever. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it got to that time. But when you had that, you was that it person if you had that that phone pause. I was just talking to my homie the other day. I was like, I don't think I'm going to get rid of none of my phones, man. Yeah. I just walked in the stores unit and I had those, um, that prayer man is color, mm -hmm. that yeah. green one. Yeah. And I just say, man, because I, I used to just throw them on with a pair of ski pants mm -hmm. and then you good for a couple of days. Yeah. As long as you brush your teeth and wash your ass. Man, <laughs> you know, right? You, know, you, can, you can wear them out. You can wear them out. You know yeah. what I mean? But, I look and I, I went in the box. I got like, damn, I'm, I really was a foam head. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. got all of them, but I give some away. Like I got cousins that play ball in school and stuff like that. And they be like, I wanted the one, and they know the name. Yeah. Sometimes I forget the name. They know yeah. the number of the shoe. Yeah. You had those Jordan Retro 20. You had the this. Yeah. I'm like, hey, look, just get the color in the box and take what you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? But don't. Certain ones, I'm like, nah, you can't take those. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what about this? What about when like the phone pods have started doing the prints and stuff on that? You know, like the Galaxy phones. Is that just the just I, I just solid like colors. The, the solid colors? Yeah. But the but they went crazy. They went crazy for them, especially the younger kids. They like you want the you got those cuz? Yeah. I say yeah. Can I get them? <laughs> <laughs> and I let them get them. You know what I mean? Like some, it's just like uh, you remember that that Air Force One? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that posit that Air Force One phone posit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. I would not give mine away. Mm. I like Love, I. You're, I have all fan. of them. Yeah. I have all of them. The black one, the the silver one, mm -hmm. the um, the Black History Month one. Mm -hmm. I would not give them away. And every time I went, only ones I didn't get was the purple one. Yeah. And the my egg, Congo the, player sauce the, had them. The and crazy I was part about off. that too is that there was actually a. I think there was a Kobe edition yeah. of, of yeah. the purple one, but you also had like a friendship with Kobe where you got to go to Houston and, and yeah, meet him. Yeah, you know what? That was so crazy. So um, we went to the Toyota Center because Steve Steve Francis is my guy. Okay. And Kobe, they won, and we was in the tunnel, and he was like, "You the only one not smiling. You mad because you get you." I was like, "This man, you signed my shoes," mm. and he was like, "He gave me a pair of shoes, and he signed my other shoe." So Cole was like, he was just so cool. And they went out that night. We had a good time. And it was just like, you think about those moments back then. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, God, damn. I met um Was he was, a big wire was, fan? Matumbo, Matumbo. Yeah, he's a big wire fan. Awesome. I met Matumbo, all those guys. It was just amazing just like to be there. Shaq, everybody. It was just like crazy. Just to be right those guys, man. But Shaq, he's super funny. Shaq yeah. never forget. Like I I ran back into Shaq. Like a year later in Miami, he was driving that that Impala, the <laughs> Superman one. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Slim, get off the goddamn corner." <laughs> He's just funny. He Hilarious. Just so, he 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 never forgot me. Like, and then I saw him again at the Four Seasons in DC in Georgetown. He he never forget. Yeah. He was like, "What you doing now?" You know what I mean? So it was just cool, man, to be there. But Kobe was funny. Yeah. He what was funny. what shoes did he give you? It was some um. Damn. Would it have been just Nike Kobe's, whatever pair he had? I think had it out? was some Nike Kobe's. Or the Hyper Dunks. Maybe. And he signed Sh Steve's shoe. Uh -huh. mm. Had that shoe. Um, he signed two shoes. I forgot, but I got them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the storage unit. Yeah, I got them in my <laughs> unit. Yeah, he, he was super cool, though, man. Super cool. We got to talk about Wale. Yes. My God. When did he? Yes. What, what up, Slim Charles? That's my, That's my big cross. <laughs> Remember, guy, right? Work, yeah. The work freestyle on work, 100 miles. He, but he. Look, what, the what, king of DC, nah. The, but one thing Big about G. yeah, but one thing about Wale that people don't understand, Wale loves hard. Yes, he, he does. wants everybody. Yep. The, some people say he comes off as like arrogant. Mm -hmm. He's just confident mm -hmm. and passionate he, and passionate. Yes. Mm -hmm. He wants Very. everybody like he wants everybody to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I used to coach him on stuff back before he got big. Yeah, I used you to like tell music stuff. Everything, just like the circles he mm -hmm. deal with. Like I used to always tell him, like crab in the burrow, because they always sit with that foul city crabs in the burrow that keep pulling you down and mm -hmm. snatching you. No, you can't go. So you know, what I mean, he always he wants, and he he jumped out on a limb. He wanted that. He wanted our music to excel. Go go go! Yeah yeah. go. yeah, yeah. And once he did that, it's on us to do the rest. Yeah, that's why I always say, just put me in front of the door. If I don't make it through that door, it's not meant. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, just keep going. 
But we talk, you know what I mean? All the time I talk to him, we text birthdays. Yeah. yeah. And I'm waiting in town on my LA. I go with him. When did you realize he was like really doing it in I terms would, of sneakers? You know what I mean? Because back, 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 back. Forever. He was on sneaker crazy. He yeah. before he grew, grew his braids. Before yeah. his dress. He was he was really a sneaker here. He had on some some stuff, but he had on some sneakers that nobody had. Yeah. He always was. He'd be like, man, I got to get those. He was always a sneakerhead. Like, he really put that sneakerhead shit on the map. I for mean, sure. For sure. You yeah. know what I mean? He was into that. So was that, a, was that a thing? Because I know Wale uh, talks early on, you know, in, in his career where, you know, you said there's like a traditional kind of like Washington, D.C. Yeah. sort of style. But he said coming up, everyone's like, your jeans too tight, Joe. Yeah. He, he always had his own little style. But do you remember him kind of like not... Not getting shit for it, but like he was like standing out where like people weren't really up on he's, his trends at the I'm time. I'm glad he stuck with it though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I I'll never forget it was a show in North Estate. No, it was Kenny Burns. It was Wale. I think it was us. It was Backyard and somebody else. And Wale, nobody knew Wale was there. Wale popped out and they went crazy. Mm. He had on these jeans and they was a little too tight. I think. <laughs> it was him saying it. You're yeah, too tight, and, he had, <laughs> was, and he had on some different colored shoes and he had on this top. It was a hoodie, but it had the colors in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it it finagled in it and it it kind of matched with the matched shoes. With yeah. The, yeah. But the jean and he just always had his style. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had a little dot and he took the dot and he was just rapping. Mm -hmm. And he knew that, you know, what he wanted to do. Yeah, and he went and did it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I always tell him he was like, "Gang, like, come on." He tells me all the time, "Come on out here, bro. Just don't, just come." Yeah. He never say leave home. He just say come, bro. Yeah. You, they looking. You got a lot of work out here. Come, come. Mm. You know what I mean. So you know, it just been a lot going on. You know, what I, mean? I just lost my mom and my son back to back. Mm -hmm. So I have more time. Yeah. You know what I mean to really, you know what I mean, chase my career a little more now. There's a photo that you posted, you and your son in the same sneakers. I love that. Yeah, we were always on sneakers, man. Mm. Like, even when his mom and yeah. me separated, I had left a ton of shoes mm -hmm. where he was. And he used to like put my shoes on, they were too big. I always was a sneaker, man. Mm. Yeah. Man, like I get a pair, I get them for him. I get a pair, I get them yeah. for him. And we always did that. And I get it like a Madness T-shirt with his name on it, my name on the back. Yeah. But it was it was crazy, man. But that sneaker, it's, it's just a part of my life. That's Madness, what was that, on Georgia Average? On Georgia Average, yeah, yeah. yeah, 3120. Yeah, Madness Connection. Ed Ty, the whole crew that's like, they'll they make like a, a sneaker will come out, and we'll match, they'll match a T-shirt. Yeah, same color. The same yeah. color. Yeah. And that, that was the trend back then, and, and it, it went to, I think, to, to this day. They, they kind of came back out really strong. You know, a lot of people like those old trends. Old school went back, mm -hmm. came back like. In a but the thing about the way. old days, they the old days. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I, there you, we go. You had to lay well, it for me. I had to... well, there we yeah. go. You know, I got a quote. So I'm on. Uh, what's that? Um, uh, what's that platform? When when people call Cam it cameo, cameo. When so they I'm, ask, like, oh, oh which yo, they want you to happy say happy birthday. birthday. Cameo, so <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's no birthday. It's they want me to quote <laughs> every all wire quotes. <laughs> wow, what's and the most popular one? The, the um the Clay Davis one, but it's um, um on a Sunday morning. Yeah, you try to hit church, church lady. His grandma to pray. <laughs> you hit the nigga Neva. I'm standing here torn in the torn up church crown from a bona fide color lady. Do you know what a color lady is? Not your mom's for sure. Yeah. Because if it was that. You wouldn't have did that shit. You <laughs> trifling with Avon Boxdale reputation here. You know that? So I run wow. all of my old lines. So I'm still <laughs> How much does fresh. that cost? <laughs> man, yeah. So it's like I'm fresh, man. And, Damn, I hope and, we got that in the budget. Man, <laughs> Do we I'm have to pay you for that? <laughs> nah, 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 yeah. I'm fresh. Well, I'm fresh in the mind with that. So it's just like, man, you know, it's like that wire made. It changed my life. Mm. Because like some people have one foot in, one foot out. You still live in the neighborhood. It's mm -hmm. still going on right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. During the time when, when my brother was murdered, mm -hmm. that was the last couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. George called, because I have a dope relationship with George Pelican as a writer. Mm -hmm. So Dave, he was like, hey, Anwar, you need to take a few days off. We can move some stuff around. I was like, nah. David Simon. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I was like, I might don't make it back. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was real, because it was going on in the neighborhood, and my brother was murdered, you know what I mean? And I was like, if I don't go back down here, man, and work, I might not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of getting axed off on the show, I might be axed off. Anything might happen. Right. You know what I mean? You might yeah. get locked up. You might get killed. Anything. So 
I was a part of the whole thing. You know what I mean? And you know, and I, I never forget that was the time. I think it was a, it was a, it was a, actually it was a phone posit coming out during the time my brother was killed and everybody was getting the phones and they had the shirts that matched the recipes Tay on and it just was crazy, crazy. At Do that you remember time. what phone it would have been? Um, I gotta look. I forgot, but I know it was. It was a. Um, I think it was. It was a color. It might have been that New York Nick color. Okay. Yeah, oh, those. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. It might have been because everybody had that color and they had the shoe, and I was like, damn. But yeah, it's like even though you're going through pain, yeah, it's always something to come like a sneaker. People, life goes on, and that's why I had to learn and put in my mind like, you got to keep going. Like when I had those talks with Wale, be like, bro, you gotta. Like nothing's going to take you out of the city, but you got to take yourself out of the city. Not saying you got to leave, but you got to come and broaden your horizons, do more. Mm -hmm. And like the mind state that he's in now, I really, I really love it because he talks more about, he talks about film, yeah, mm -hmm. producing, um, what's next. You know what I mean? What could we do to get some more content out for the city? He's super smart. He always been smart, but I think he's super wild. He been he been around. Yeah. He been Seen around a lot. the block. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. When you were shooting the wire, were you also making trips to New York City to shop? Yeah. What was that about? Because I heard about that as well. Yeah, it was it was like New York was super fresh. New York always has everything. Mm. I don't care, like, man, house and hoops. Mm. Everywhere they always have an exclusive. And yeah. you can get the 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 good product from New York yeah. without playing, paying that that double price on it. Like now they put that double price in stock. They right. put the, I don't want to shout out no no spots, <laughs> yeah. but they do, they put that double money on a shoe now. Mm -hmm. Like you, you walk into go, a mom and pop store and they're charging you way over retail. And, they, and right, well you can go and write in, in one of the spots and then you can get them in before time. And New York always had everything before mm -hmm. we had it. You know what I mean? Like what was just just a minute ago? I had um I got some shoes from um I was in Vegas mm -hmm. and I got a pair um Yeezys mm -hmm. and they didn't come out at home until two months later and everybody mm -hmm. was like, "What the freak did you, you brought get them those? back home?" Right. Like, and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna take these off." Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? So I still only wore them once, mm. and it's like you know, I got a closet full of shoes. I think I only like wore once or twice. And New York City, always, I don't care, New York always. And during the COVID, a lot of those mom and pop stores didn't make it past the yeah. time. Yeah. Right, And right. was closed down. I just rolled past the store just now. And I, um, uh, what was the name of it? Um, Life something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we got a double bag. And I look and it's all Shuttered. paper in the window. Wow. And I was like, damn. Because they, they, they used to have all of the fresh, the Air Force One, because I love Air Force Ones. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, man, I could go right there, but it's closed. A lot of spots. The Jordan store, when you get off the train. Yeah. Right on 34th. It's closed. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other yeah. store is closed. Yeah. The other spot is closed. I'm like, damn. Yeah. So New York used to be my spot where I had to just come. And like, gee, when you get up, I said, you got to go up top. Yeah. Like, where? You, you just look around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got I to gotta ask you, so like years ago, we have another talk show. And we had Jim Jones on. Oh, yeah. yes. And... We he started talking about Wale a little a little crazy on the show, but yeah. he had also we had brought up the topic of the Nike boots. Oh and, man, we started that. Nike. And he had said that <laughs> he already he, knows he where know, you're going. They know that. He, no, but Jim tried to claim that DC was lying about Wale, man. Wale, well, my, and then that's another thing I used to tell him. I used to say, "Bro, those are a different pair," because he kept the the Nike boots on. I was like, "Bro, you getting them? They sending you these shoes." Yeah. He's like, no, nah, these the same. I say, them not the same ones. Why? Because mm. the other, I took a picture, bro. You had a scrape on the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> the kept, forensics. He, he yeah. Kept, he kept fresh Nike boots. But Jim, that they know we started that, man. Unequivocally. Like Washington, D.C. Bottom, started they that. They know that, man. Does, does, that, does that frustrate it's, you a little bit, though? Because it you, used to. It used to, but like, I know people know. Mm. They know. And like, Jim has a big, broader voice. You know what I mean? And he can get out there and be like, man, y'all know, don't play that shit. Y'all know what it is. You, you know what I mean? So it's like, they know, they know that. Yeah. But do you, feel, that. do you feel though that like, cause you said you go to New York to, to get fresh, but did you feel like people were like underestimating DC style? Yeah. Because in a, this, that's just like, I, I can, I can use that as, as my everyday piece. 
New York has places that DC doesn't. New York has film and 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 opportunities that DC doesn't have for film. And I used to be like, gee, why you got? And I say, I, I gotta go to my second home real quick. I gotta get on the train and go get some work mm -hmm. because we don't have the work in the city. New York had everything, everything, yeah. bro. Like you can go get all the North Face stuff. I, I still got some pieces that I got from New York that you will never see anybody with. Wow. Footwear or apparel? Both. With apparel, for clothes, yeah, shoes. Yeah. New York had it. Yeah. And they know that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like once upon a time, like you could come in Georgetown, they shut all my spots down. Princess and Princess, man, all those places were shut down. Like New York, even back in the day, everybody would come up and get the MCM, yep. get the Gucci, all that. Up here, they had everything. Big, big likes, big dreams. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? The it's thing too, uh, I don't know if you've noticed it. Is so you know, uh, New Balance big in DC, big in Baltimore, but also like big in Philly too. Yeah, Philly, Philly, the Ox, all the Ox, all the Muslim brothers. They they love the New Balance. <laughs> the I Muslim brothers love the New Balance. Really? Yeah. So they put it and like like I said, as a kid when we was when we when we had to like do what we had to do. We couldn't, we, it wasn't, you couldn't roll your pants leg up because it was the, it was being Muslim, you had to, you wear what you wear. And they were mm -hmm. like, oh, that's, you wearing that. And it was, it wasn't cool when you pray and, and, and you had to go to school in that certain era. Now you could put on the new balance, roll your pants leg up, yeah. put your kufi on, mm -hmm. comb your beard out, and you, you straight. Back then it was like, oh, what do you got on? And it was it was like, oh, you got on the dress, thinking wearing this, you know what I mean? Back well, in school. I, I need to understand this. So you're saying that the the Philly Muslim guys didn't feel like wearing new balances was totally appropriate? No, I'm saying back then in like in DC, like back then, mm -hmm. and it wasn't in the in the trends where you had to wear sandals back then. Got it. With your religion. Got, got it. it. Like now you can wear a pair of new balances yeah. roll your leg. Pants there you don't have to have the ship ship on. Nah, you could. Because you could I went to Philly, like this was like 2017 or something yeah. like that, 2018, and I was wearing a pair of 990s. I'm just walking down the street with like yeah. a Stone Island jacket on, but like people came up to me and they're just like, yo, those are sick, those are sick, those are sick. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting it. I didn't nah. realize how like. It came, it kind of it kind of caught on in Philly. But we always. You're saying you New started Bible. that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It kind of caught on. Mm -hmm. But it's like I got, I got cousins on the north side. And they used to come down from Philly to DC to see my music and stuff like that. And they wasn't too fond of the new balance. Mm. But they always would wear the Air Force Ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like New York. We know New Yorkers wear the Thames, mm -hmm. the Butters. Mm -hmm. They we know that. They invented that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But come on, man. They know the Nike boots is ours, man. <laughs> <laughs> they know that. It yeah. all comes full circle come back to New Balance. You know what I mean? We, we, we give them the Thames. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's what they did. You know, even when the New Yorkers came to D.C. back in the days, there's still some New Yorkers in my city that survived that time in the 90s. A lot of people didn't survive that time in the 90s. Mm -hmm. They're still there. They came down with the 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 the, the, the uh, Thames and the... Um, the Chuckers. Yep. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of the, it's the scene in The Wire, right, where uh, uh, Chris and Snoop are talking about trying to find the guys from New York. And like, yeah. you find a guy with the Yankee hat, but then she asks him, uh, yep. who do Tim's. young meek be? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right? exactly. <laughs> What's the radio station you Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, bust your head. Right on the know. spot. <laughs> right on the spot. I remember you gotta that. Be, you got to be careful in Baltimore, man. Mm. You can make the wrong turn, mm. and you won't make it out. Wow. You know what I mean? Because they know your dress, they know your code, your, yeah. your 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 accent, and a lot of people like this. How do you know how to speak that? I got a I had an auntie on the north side of Baltimore, mm -hmm. Barkley. You know, I'm used to sell the little the little the ice creams in the in the, in the paint mm -hmm. and the quarter war. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I had people all around, even my New York family. They come and talk, and you know you different codes, and mm -hmm. so New York is too dark. You know, you got to know that. If you ain't two and dog, you might not make it out of work. You know what I'm saying? So it's just it's, it's just, just like that. Like in, in Southeast, Mo, mm -hmm. come on, Mo, stop playing, Mo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we know the slangs and it's, it's that. Just like your shoes. They know they can pick you out by your shoes, bro. Cause I, cause you I know don't belong before, around here. <laughs> before we had the Puma deal, uh, Emery was yeah. like, Huge New Balance guy. He had like yeah. 990 or better. Was He's like pulling his... me down now. Yeah, yeah. but he, yeah. before yeah. that, he was like a huge New Balance guy. And like that was because he's from 
that that area that area but it was it it was interesting because i think there was a time where my friend owned a a resale shop where he had got jay-z to buy a pair of 1300s and like he had talked jay-z into like (laughs) being like you need to wear these because it's the baltimore thing you know yeah nah 1300s man like we have pictures though yeah we got pictures from back back in the day when we were wearing even my uncles everybody even them in lord and penitentiary they were wearing new balance so we with that new balance, nobody can't take that new balance from yeah. us, man. Yeah. Have you noticed how much more popular it is now? <laughs> yeah, it's super more popular because you have the newer, the the, the younger generation, they into it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And new balance is super comfortable, man. You know what I mean? Some shoes you can get and wear and they're not that comfortable. Yeah. It's just the style of it. Right. <laughs> like but you can literally struggling wear these through it with the new balance. Days, yeah. As long as you don't have no funky socks. <laughs> You can wear these yeah. New Balance for days. <laughs> you, you, you talk about the DTLR, but do you see yeah. like what Joe Fresh Goods is doing and all those New Balances? How do you feel about like you know what I Brendan love said? Them, man. I love all New Balance. Um, that that Balenciaga look on mm-hmm. that New Balance, that fat yeah. one. Um, mm-hmm. I did a thing in Jacksonville. I was out and I just it was a bunch of places we ran to and there was a New Balance thing, and I just wore them and everybody was like, "Those New Balance are fresh." Mm. Yo. Did you get those? Man, I said, nah, they, they, you know what I mean? I mm-hmm. bought them. Like, and everywhere I go, people be like, man, those New Balance are fresh. The airport, anywhere. And I'm always got my New Balance on because yeah. they just super comfortable. Yeah. And we we wore them for so many years. Yeah. It's just like, it's an addiction. Mm-hmm. I got to have me some New Balance. You know what I mean? Just like I could put a suit on with some New Balance. As long as the color coordination is, is, is perfected, yeah. I can rock them out. You like to do the matching top I to could bottom? Do, I yeah. could do me a, a Chinese collar, white, a gray, a gray um, suit, and some gray New Balance. Gray suede mesh. And, and I could do a white suit, yeah. gray T-shirt, New Balance with some gray strings in them. I could wear some white New Balance, switch them up a little bit, throw some pink strings in them. There we gray go. Shirt, <laughs> the gray. You know what I mean? You can freak them That's how it. you want. Yeah, what yeah, do you yeah. think? You know, you talked about white New Balances. What do you think about like the five fifties, the white leather old school basketball that shoe that is like I, I blown have, up? I have the I have the ones, but mine has burgundy in them because I okay. went to it because I'm a come. Well, I'm a Washington football fan. I'm, I'm a Washington football fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I'm, a, yeah, I'm a Giants fan. So but, no, no, but you guys yeah. are see like I'm a Giants fan around, too. You guys are doing great. Not going to yeah. Five one. Not to jump the subject on that, but no, no, go ahead. The the coach six, six and one. They play. They play for that coach. <laughs> he the coach you. <laughs> has a, yeah. The, they're, this they're, is they what I want in. my organization yep. to do: wipe out everything mm-hmm. and start over. Because we have the players, mm-hmm. and I didn't want us to give the money to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. I don't okay. want to say his name, but <laughs> we could have used that money and got some more chess pieces for our secondary. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of did more with it, and it was cool. Like they brought me, and I did a voiceover for the season oh, opener last yeah. year. Okay. And they was like, what do you think? And I think they had to cut me off, man. Because I was going in. <laughs> like, they brought you in for like some yeah, some You to talk X's and O's. Yeah. Because I rode my bike to, all the way from wow. uptown to RFK. Mm. Snuck in the games to get my ass whooped. Coming back home. Wow. You know what I mean? Just like you were somewhere you weren't supposed to be. Yeah. But I was supposed to be at the game. And I, I used to sneak in the game. Mm. You know what I mean? A little dirty ass little kid sneaking in the game. So I, that's my team. Yeah. But like you you win with them and you lose with them. Definitely. That's Absolutely. what happens. It comes you know around, I mean? you know. I'm just like, yeah, so back to the new battles. The, I had the, I had the um the white with the burgundy and I wore them to the um I wore them to the uh Philly game when when Philly beat our ass. Got it. <laughs> and I wore them to the game, but Philly beat you know, everyone's ass, right? Yeah, yeah they're so killing going, it too. Actually we're going to the Philly game because my best friend, Wincy, he's a uh Eagles fan. Okay. So we're going we're gonna go out there, he's gonna make the steak and cheese right out there. Ooh. See, they make the Philly steaks. DC, we make the steak and cheese. Ah, oh, okay. This is new ah, to me. What's there the steak we go. and cheese? So the steak and cheese. Did they take that from you, or you took that from them? No, we took that from them. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the Philly, we know we know Philly is a steak and cheese. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Philly cheese steak, but we do the steak and cheese. So Philly, they they do the the cheese with yeah, us yeah, and of course, they do yeah. the cheese. Yep. So we do the steak. They say we're not no steak and cheese. We're Philly cheese steak. Got it. So we put the steak in with with all the dressings on it uh-huh. with the cheese. It's good. So, Yes. Yeah, right. What if about you? Had, if, you had to, if you had to rank the three, if you have <laughs> cheese steak, steak and cheese, and a chopped cheese, oh. a steak and cheese, because I'm okay. from DC, Washingtonian. I just sold DC everything. But what about I yums? Had a steak, you I like had a, yums? 
That's what we. That's what we get it from. Young, yeah, Fourteenth yeah. Street. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If you get it, like Anthony Hamilton, yeah, I caught him coming from the White House from a show. He said, "Yo." I had to come here and get a steak and cheese, bro. And you know Every what else? Every time I miss town, I got to get Corn a steak and cheese. Cornbread, fish, and corn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to He's tell you He's got some so. Jordans. Yeah, he got he plenty of J's. You so know that? It, he, he's, 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 he has he like had the collection. One. He had, he no, had, he had, no, he had the whole collection. He had like the 1 to 23. Yeah. All in, like in brown, exclusive. Brown, that chocolate yeah. leather. He do it, man. See, I'm a little junkie with mine. But when I send you that video, you're going to show that storage. You're going to say, wow. I got I got it stuff. Send us here. everything we need to see. Are you right wearing a, a jersey, too, with to match the? No, Mar I just okay. got this. I, I'm a big V-neck Hanes guy. Okay. Because yeah. it's just comfortable. I can go okay. shower, bop, bop. You know what I mean? I put on my old, like I might got like an old Doug Williams jersey. Okay. Or something like that. Or my, my, my like a, like a Bullets jersey. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a throw old bullets on, like in this, you know. Retro joint? Yeah, the retro. Love that's what, <laughs> that's yeah. on the water. Yeah. Cutty. Cutty. <laughs> right yeah. there, the, the retro. Them was the, them was the days where, like, New Balance, I, why I push New Balance so much is because we we wore them, and I saw my older guys wearing them. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we just, we kept going. But, like, in Georgetown, you can get them, like, 1300s. And you know what I mean? The nine the, the nine nine five. Five seven four? How do we feel about five, the five seven, seven four? Man, it was cool. It was a little fat. Okay. Because he's always almost like I, I like, like five seven and four he does. I always say that like if you're like a like a real like new balance head, yeah. like the five seven four is like it's like the beginner pack new yeah. balance, but like you kinda have to like step up and get like a nine hundred or more. Yeah. And like the five seven fours, I watched the older guys wear them like with the gray yep. Moss Brown sweatsuits. Yep. And then they had this Moss Brown sweatsuit that was black and black and gold. And they had some old nine ninety fives that were black with that gold new mm -hmm. balance. Mm -hmm. Ain't had the money to get them. Damn. <laughs> so we used to like baby doll in Georgetown. And used to have the paper like, hey, can you yeah. help me get money for our uniforms? And we'll get money for our band equipment. Yeah. We'll go shopping after we make a couple of dollars <laughs> and go right to Princess and Princess. She know me first. She ain't coming, baby. I miss you. And she's like, this, you going to all the new stores? You don't come to mommy no more. I said, I'm still coming to you, but you got to go holler at everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sabi, Spread it around. Yeah, the Snyder's. Spots, man, the Snyder's. All that. But it's like now, you get everything. You can get it to, to come right to your front doorstep. Do you like that or? Nah. No. I like the hunt. Yeah. Yeah. You go smell it. You know what I mean? The yeah. DTLR don't got it. You got to go over here. You got Shoe City. You got yeah. all these different yeah. places. Foot Lock, all these different spots. Charlie Rudo. Yeah, but it's like I get like DTLR. I, they got so many more flavors now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's so many damn stores yeah. you can uh, go and grab it. Yeah, but you like the hunt. Love the hunt. The smell of the hunt, man. Gotta we go we got to put yeah. together. <laughs> we we got to put together a Giants Commanders team. We get Wale and Steak and Cheese, yeah. like mutual friends. So me and Wale, and we actually did the first game. Okay, and we took over the whole broadcast. And what's what's my guy, man? He kind of got pissed at me. <laughs> um, the cornerback, um, Smoot. Okay. He kind of got pissed a little bit because I think we hogged the damn joint up in D Hall. That's my guy. Mm -hmm. D Hall was like, oh, oh that is Fred yeah. Smoot. He kind of got like a little salty a little bit. Like, I guess that we took, we was there too long for duration. <laughs> but and he was like, hey, my seat, man. Like, and I was you were hogging like, the mic? No, nah, I was still sitting there. You were there, stepping man. on his lines? I was still there, <laughs> stepping on lines. And then D Hall was laughing because that's my guy. Yeah. And D Hall, if you, I know you're going to watch it probably. I, I need my jersey. Yeah. Still got to still give me I, my jersey. I know it was the Ravens. What did you think when you saw the other year when they had done the tribute to Michael K. Williams, like before the. That was beautiful. Mm. Ravens always, I got a couple of guys like my, like Jose Ho Blunt. He loved the Ravens. He always loved the Ravens. And I like, you know, because it's so close. Mm -hmm. I was always an Orioles fan because we didn't have a baseball team. Yeah, and so, I used yeah. to always say the Senators. I'm like a fucking kid. I don't know nothing about no Senators. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they'd be like, gee, you got to like the Nationals. I'm like, uh, I like the I yeah. like the Orioles. Yeah. But I'll put a Nationals jacket or something on, mm -hmm. but I'm really an Orioles fan. You got the Cal Ripken throwback. You know what I mean? I, I was with Cal. You know what I mean? He signed the stuff and we set Indian style with Cal. Wow. You know, we had ice cream and all that. And like that, that my eyes was like, Ugh! That's awesome. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know That's what I mean? Awesome. I'm an auto oils fan. So when they were like, gee, you can't wear the oil. I'm like, why? Like, yeah. I can wear what I want. Yeah. yeah. But I was just an oils fan. But I like the Nats too. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm an oils fan. Yeah. But I, I don't like the Ravens though. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, the show. Jackson, he's 
crazy with it though. Yeah. And we had him. We wouldn't need nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> anything else that you you know, we know you're here for work, can't go too much into it, but um yeah. anything else that you want to touch on before like oh, we get man, out of my here? documentary, man. I'm gonna do my life story. Amazing. I'm gonna do a book. Um I have a um a big G flavor in the pocket beer out that's doing well with City State Brewery in Edgewood. Shout okay. out to James. And I have a hard mix out with them, a lemonade um, iced tea. Oh, it's nice. It's doing good as well. Um, we working on a new CD, an original piece. Then we're going to do a street CD as well, the stock and stuff for the coldest summer. Mm -hmm. We're going to put that out. We're doing a big thing with the homeless youth mm -hmm. in D.C. Um, this whole winter, which we do every winter, we give them coats, socks, because in a homeless um, population, in the homeless world, Hypothermia is a big thing mm -hmm. where they where where they need socks more than anything and underwear. So we do a big thing every year. I love to do that. I love to be out there in the elements with the people, um, and just giving back. Mm -hmm. We have a big um, thing in my city right now where the gun violence is really out of control. Mm -hmm. Versus back in the eighties and nineties, it's like over, it's over the mark, and um, we're kind of like really sick of it. Yeah. Um, I have a, um, a movie coming out, um, Mailman. George Pelicanus wrote it, and his son Nick is the um, director. Okay. We got, I got some producer credits on there as well. Awesome. That'll be out soon, around the holiday time. I, I play the lead in that. Um, just auditioning for a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I have an audition for um, another thing. The other thing is the NDA I can't talk about, but um, one of the first black fishing boat companies um, to come out of Louisiana in the 60s. Amazing. Very cool. Um, just trying, man. Just auditioning. Did a bunch of voiceovers recently. Um, <laughs> just tons You're Busy, of man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just trying, man. But I, and I always say, man, film is hard, man. And I, I, mm -hmm. I tell these kids and everybody see me because I'm from the hood, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And they be like, oh, I could do that. It's hard, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's real Not work. saying don't yeah. go do it. But you got to study. You yeah. Know I mean? You got to know when to turn that phone off and. And just shut it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Can you tell me the phone story? You you mentioned this earlier, though. Yeah. The phone when you were on the set of The Deuce? Yeah, yeah. You can't, like, the, the people I work with, like, with Nina, no, she don't play about the phone on set. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm nervous on having the phone on set. So you get it's a pot. You got to pay up. If your you phone rings. Mean? Yeah, James Frangle, everybody, it, was, it, was, it wasn't no game, man. You can't have that phone ringing. <laughs> Even the A-listers, you know what I mean? They 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 take that in stride. You can't have your phone ringing. You yeah. put money in the pot and it goes to the one I, that, you know what I mean? The pot Don't have a phone on, man. Yeah. And I, I always ask, yeah. should I turn it down? Yeah, just turn the volume down. But you will, will and ruin an entire clip Damn. with a loud ass, mm, <laughs> whose phone is that? I just cut the shit off. Yeah. Just cut it off. You're, yeah. you're safe at base. You're yeah. safe at home base when you cut it off. There we you go. Can just turn it back on when you finish. There we go. Absolutely. Or leave it in your trailer. Or leave it in the green room. Yep. <laughs> That's it, man. You know? And Juan, this was awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for your time, Beautiful, man. Beautiful, man. Shout out to everybody in D.C., man. And we run the New Balance, man. So, you know, man, anybody watching, man, you know it's New Balance forever. You heard What's it. Up, man? This has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you next week. Peace.